Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again, it is Sunday, and that means it's time for the Texas Gun Vault Poll Question of the Week, a weekly segment where I ask you guys, as my viewers and subscribers, about something that deals with firearms, the firearms culture, current events, and the news, or just something I am interested in finding out how you guys feel about, and I poll you, you guys give me your responses, you guys comment and vote on each other's comments to give us the time top rated comments of the week. This week I'm asking you about the fallout of the Kyle Rittenhouse case. And it's amazing, it's only been about a week to two weeks since the verdict came out and it seems like everybody has moved on. I'm always surprised by the collective memory of people. It seems to last about three minutes, even when you have monumental stories that could change the future in many ways we're already moving on to other current events. But with that said, let's dive right into this week's question. With the not guilty verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, do you think this will result in any changes to gun laws and or self-defense laws at the state or federal level, whether they be pro or anti-Second Amendment? So the reason that I asked this question is because in the aftermath of the not guilty verdict, you had many celebrities coming out and saying, well, if Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent of these charges, we need to change the laws, meaning they want to weaken the laws. Of course, many politicians, especially the anti-gun politicians, jumped on this bandwagon. But in the weeks since this verdict, and as I said, it's only been two weeks, and of course with the collective memory of people only lasting about three minutes, I would already suspect that by now you would already see bills being filed across the country if anything was going to change. But in that moment, in that heated moment, the hours after the verdict, there were a lot of people saying a lot of things. And I was curious what you guys thought the long-term ramifications were going to be. I know in that moment it looked like many of the usual suspects like California, New York, New Jersey, they were going to weaken their already very weak self-defense laws even more to protect their citizens from the evil Kyle Rittenhouses of the world, these white supremacists that seem to be everywhere. And we know that they're actually not, but they're just placating to their base. So with that said, Let's see what you guys have to say. With over 1,100 votes this week, we have, yes, blue states or feds will try to weaken self-defense laws, 55%. Yes, red states will try to strengthen self-defense laws, 9%. No, nothing will change. States will defend existing laws, 21%. No, nothing will change, but will make people think before acting, 12%, and something else, explain in the comments, 2%. You know, the only thing about this poll that really surprises me is I thought more people were going to vote that the red states would strengthen self-defense laws, because that's actually what happened after all of the 2020 riots. You had states like Florida that changed their law that says if you are surrounded by people in your car, if they have stopped you and surrounded your vehicle and they start to try to threaten you by beating on the car and you fear for your life, if you speed away and you hit one of them because you know they're always going to stand in front of your car and then do like a soccer flop, oh no, I got hit by the car, and then try to come after you, they're going to say, well, you surrounded the car and because the car is part and covered under the Castle Doctrine, it is your fault and you are not liable for any damages if you are threatened and your life is in danger. So we already have examples of states that have strengthened self-defense laws. And I know there's been a lot of rabble-rousing from the left saying that they want to weaken self-defense laws, but so far nothing's really changed or been filed, even in the very liberal states like New York or New Jersey. So I was actually expecting, yes, red states would try to strengthen their self-defense laws, would actually get more votes. But let's go through each one of these. Yes, blue states or feds will try to weaken self-defense laws. As I mentioned, I was expecting this one to win, and by getting 55%, it doesn't really surprise me, and that's only because so many people on the left and so many celebrities and talk show hosts were out there saying, we need to change the laws because of this. And of course, you have all of the clapping seals in the audience going, woo, yeah, 
way we shouldn't be able to defend ourselves the government and the state will protect us but you know and it looked like you had many of the politicians like joe biden and of course aoc and nancy pelosi who all made comments about the kyle rittenhouse verdict I was expecting something to actually be proposed. I didn't think it would go anywhere, but because of all of the talk, all of the media that was going on, all the panels on CNN and MSNBC, I understand why many people thought this was going to be the way that it goes. But luckily, with a little bit of time, nothing really seems to have panned out. Then we have, yes, red states will try to strengthen self-defense laws. As I mentioned, we already have examples of this with Florida, and they have strengthened self-defense laws, but only 9%. I actually felt that if I was going to vote in the positive or the affirmative, I was going to vote for this one. Being here in Texas, I know many people really defended Kyle Rittenhouse, and I kind of expected a red legislature to pass better self-defense laws and making sure that if somebody was involved in an act like this, that they would be defended. Then we have, no, nothing will change. States will defend existing laws. And that one, I think, kind of covers both pro and anti-gun laws. You know, for example, the blue states will still say, well, our laws that really have very weak provisions for self-defense, we're going to defend those. And then the red states are going to defend their castle doctrines and so forth. And if I was going to vote in this poll, this is actually the one that I personally would have voted for. Then we have, no, nothing will change, but will make people think before acting. I actually think in reality, this is the one that is going to actually pan out the most. I think that, of course, in the future, because things are cyclical, we are going to see riots. We're going to see things in the future like what happened in 2020. And of course, people are going to go out and to defend their communities as they should. They have a Second Amendment right to do so. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, you have to weigh your actions against the possible consequences. You have a right to go out there and defend your communities, but you have to decide, is this the hill you're going to die on? But now with this verdict and the possible ramifications, I think many people are going to think a little bit more before they act. Maybe it's going to embolden people, or maybe it's going to make them be a little bit more reserved. But I think in reality and in practice, this is the one that is going to actually be the most realistic outcome. And then we have something else explained in the comments, only 2%. So that's how you guys voted. So let's see what you guys have to say with the top rated comments of the week. With the top rated comment of the week, we have Coffee Killer who said, I hope nothing changes. I hope states will continue to uphold existing laws of self-defense. And I completely agree. And I think this is, when it comes to the legal side of this argument, exactly what we all should expect. Then we have Brian B. This is a great question, and it's something that briefly crossed my mind after the verdict came out. We'll see how this turns out. And yes, time will tell, but we have a very short collective memory, and now we're already on to other things. You know, now we have the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, and it's just going to keep going and going. And that's what's in the 24-hour news cycle now. Kyle Rittenhouse is long and forgotten. This is something that I've learned in my personal life. If something bad happens to you and you're really embarrassed and you think that everyone's going to remember, they're going to forget in seven days because they're going to go off and think about other things, new things come in the news, whatever. So now Kyle Rittenhouse is over, we're going to move on to other stuff. And luckily in that moment, in the heat of the moment, nothing passed. I didn't ram anything through. So I don't think legally anything big is really going to come of it. Then we have armed attorneys who say, we see a huge shift in tactics across the United States, not so much in red blue states, but in cities. Standards that are imposed on law enforcement are trickling down to civilian self-defense cases, e.g. training, failure to de-escalate, etc. Now, the armed attorneys, I'm going to assume, they're attorneys, and they're probably seeing some of this in their own practice or in cases that they're dealing with. So this is a really interesting perspective. I do agree with them that sometimes when people are in self-defense scenarios, people can armchair quarterback these things and go, well, they should have done this, they should have done that. 
But somebody like me, or probably the majority of like you, I'm not in law enforcement. I've never been in the military. I've never been in any type of training scenario where I have to take down a perp or arrest a perp. It's just not something that I have prepared for. So in an armed self-defense scenario with somebody breaking into my house, I'm probably going to go a lot on gut reaction. I'm not going to sit here and think, well, I should do this. I should have grabbed them this way. These are the tactics I should have used because I don't think about that on a daily basis. We're a police officer or some type of military personnel might. And then the armchair quarterbacks, the people in the media will say, well, he shouldn't have done that because he should have done this and that. But they've never been in those scenarios either. And then you have these unrealistic expectations on how people are supposed to react when their life is on the line. And he's right. A lot of this is trickling down to civilians, which I don't think that's the way it really should be. Then we have Critter9A who says, with the Congress screaming for the DOJ to bring federal charges and with the belt chin Nadler trying to push gun control through his hearings, thanks to Chip Roy for slowing fat boy down. Well, I have to say that it is weird that the feds are trying to go after Rittenhouse, but that was one of those things like in the moment. They're like, well, he was innocent. We got to see if we can trump up some federal charges. That's going to go nowhere either because the DOJ does not have jurisdiction over this event. And there's no evidence that this was a hate crime, which would elevate it to the federal level. The people that were shot in this incident were white. The perpetrator is a white and half Hispanic. So we don't see any type of typical hate crime here. It can't get elevated at all. Then we have Jason Walter who says, more realistically, it would be the first two. The stance on the Second Amendment is just as polarized as the other issues across the country. I'm just thankful I'm living in a red state now versus the deep blue state I was in. And I am glad that you escaped. I really hope that all of the Second Amendment loving patriots that are behind enemy lines in blue states will escape to the red states. But the downside to this is that the nation becomes more and more polarized. As the red states become more red, because all the people that are Republican or conservative or libertarian leave the communist socialist states, well, those states become even more communist and socialist. So now we have states that are more divided than ever. And to be honest with you, this is one of the things that I fear. You know, when it came to the Civil War 150 years ago, the states were divided, but they were also divided geographically. But now you have states that are not divided geographically, but politically. It's this big patchwork of states. And I really worry about if armed conflict and a breakup of the United States, which I actually think in the long run, maybe not this century, but in the future, is inevitable. I just don't know how all of that's going to go down. It does kind of concern me a little bit. So there you go. That is the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week dealing with the aftermath of the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict and what you guys have to say. I personally think that this verdict is not really going to change anything. Everybody was all upset in the moment, but we're going to move on to other things. And the only real consequence to the future is I think hopefully people are going to think about their actions when they decide to go out and defend their communities and think about smart tactics and what they need to do. And of course, doing the right thing. But all of those self-defense strategies are things you personally have to think about and think about your actions and the consequences that may come after. So there you go, the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. If you would like to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will also put a link in the description below. You can go click that, go vote, comment, and like other people's comments so we can get the top rated comments of the week. And if you've made it this far, I hope you guys see the Christmas tree behind me. If you guys want to participate in the Texas Gun Vault Christmas tree, where you guys send me a cheap little ornament dealing something with guns or my YouTube channel, please send one to me. My PO box is in the description below. It can be super cheap. Make sure you put your name on it, any note that you would like me to read when I do open them and the year that you sent it to me. I like to start a little tradition around here. And this right here is a little tiny tree. I've added a couple of ornaments that deal with my own channel. Got an HK ornament up here, 
a little tequila ornament that my wife bought me because I like to drink tequila during my live streams, but you guys can decide what you want to send me and we can have a little fun with it. So there you go, the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. I look forward to seeing your responses in the comment section below and what you guys have to say on next week's poll. So as always, thanks for watching.